Uh, Natalie, it is so awesome to have you here. I like this photo in the leather jacket more than the Army one because this was when you ran for state Senate in Idaho. And, uh, and so welcome to the show. We'd like you to maybe tell us just a little more about you and then walk us through uh, what you found as you looked at the uh, case of Robert Ben Rhodes. Well, thanks, Mike and uh, Chris. It's it's truly an honor to be here. Um, you know, I, as you mentioned, one of the things that uh, we do on my team is we build tools. Um, a lot of us are prior Intel analysts, and um, part of our motivation for coming to a software development company uh, was to build tools for analysts that are still out in the field, that are still practitioners. Um, and the best way we can do that is to get our hands on real data. Um, and so I was I was testing out some of our software and I asked you if you had anything I could work with. Um, and you were like, I sure do. Uh, so you gave me the the trucking log. Um, so all the, all the waypoints that came out of the trucking log that, that was recovered during one of the search warrants um, from Rhodes. Um, and then we kind of went from there to see what we could find. Um, so I think if you, if you, if we could. Yeah, and I, might, I might just mention, I mean, I'm really grateful that you came and joined us here and I hope we can somehow beat the presentation that we originally put together on this because just folks, just a few weeks ago, Natalie presented this case in front of 83,000 people. Um, so she is, she is the, a big deal and the real deal. And really not, but Mike, you're selling me well. Thanks. <laughs> I, I am just so proud to know you and have you here and, uh, to, to know your husband who also is a uh, former Marine and, uh, and served overseas protecting our country. So thank you. But Natalie, take it from here. I'm going to give it to you now. Okay. And please interrupt me if I'm going too fast or if I'm, um, not digging into anything enough. Um, so these are all the waypoints. So out of that trucking log um, that was recovered, uh, it was either recovered out of his uh, residence there um, in Texas, or it was out of his truck. Um, but either case, so this trucking log was recovered and we could grab all of the waypoints out of there. And that trucking log included everything from where he stopped to refuel, um, you know, when, a, when he blew out a tire and had to get a replacement, um, when he stopped and took and took off, so he had free time and he wasn't working. Um, it includes all those times, and so we have, you know, where he stopped, um, and it, and you know, he didn't write down coordinates, so it was really just like a place name, right? So he'd say, um, you know, he he stopped in the the city name and the state, um, and then we know when he stopped. Um, we don't necessarily know when he started driving again. Um, but we do know where all the waypoints are when he stopped. So we mapped those out and you can see he was everywhere, right? Um, he didn't, he, he didn't just have one route, um, that he frequented. He drove all over, um, the United States. And so then using some of the analytical tools that we have, uh, we started to break down his, his waypoints to find his routes. Um, so I'll kind of walk through some of those. So we had um, uh, Vine. So the route that he was taking uh, when he picked her up, um, and we'll kind of zoom in here, and you can see he picked her up around here um, and then drove through Phoenix down to Casa Grande, and that's where Trooper Miller uh, was able to you know, intercede and stop her and rescue her. Um, and we also know when he had uh, Tuttle. So you can see the route that he took. Um, I know you you mentioned that you know people have said, well, two weeks was he really in the in the vehicle with with him for two weeks? Um, and she was. So she was picked up here um, in outside of Los Angeles um, and traveled around with him until finally she got free um, down here in Houston. So so how I mean this is just so hard to sometimes fathom. Natalie and Chris, here we've got him going up into Utah, back down and across the country. We've spent two weeks basically punishing this person. Uh, I know that in uh, the Regina Walters case, there was actually one person who, after this all came out, reported that Regina 
lip the words, please help me to them, but they just didn't want to get involved. Makes you wonder how often this is happening. I don't know. Chris, any thought? You know, that that's, I mean, how scary is that, right? You're, you're a victim and you're trapped and you're asking for help. I mean, um, I can only imagine what that poor girl was going through when that, uh, that citizen walked away, basically, right. you know, uh, I can only imagine what that what that process was in terms of in what she was feeling. Right. I and can't even think about it. Yeah, go ahead now. It being with him for two weeks, the yeah. you know the stops to go into a restaurant to get some food or to go into a grocery store, um, or to you know go and and use the restroom um, somewhere else. Like how many opportunities um, there were for people to potentially you know see her. Um, and whether she was able to communicate that she was in distress or not, you know, we don't know. Um, but two weeks is a long time. What, what are your What are your feelings? I mean, Natalie, as as a woman, you know, just even processing this data and now seeing it, you know, out on a map. Uh, wh what were you feeling? Just kind of processing it. I mean, I certainly would never hitchhike. Um, I mean, that would be yeah. my, my Good initial point. reaction. Um, you know, is to, uh, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of the episodes, Mike, and to not put yourself in a high risk situation, right? Um, anytime that you take yourself out of what is normal and out of what you know, um, you're putting yourself into a situation that you become the prey, if you will. Um, and, you know, to, to avoid that situation as, as much as possible. Interesting. As a trained soldier, do you think that uh, gives you, you know, some type of a cutting edge or being in, a, obviously you've you had some very, you know, uh, interesting zones that you've been in, you know, i.e. combat zones, that kind of stuff. And then you come back to civilian life. What, what do you, I mean, back to the States, what, what process of your state of awareness do you think you gain a plus or minus by being in such a horrific combat zone area as well? I mean, there, help you. there's mm -hmm. a kinetic threat that everyone, regardless of being a female or a male, you know, faces when, you're, when you're in a combat zone. Um, yep. And also being a female, um, you know, you, you learn uh, quickly to have a battle buddy, uh, as we call them, um, to not, you know, you don't walk around the base at night um, alone um, and you don't mm -hmm. put yourself in, in compromising situations. And that's just uh, good practice um, to make sure that you're not in a situation in which you can become the victim. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. continue on, Natalie. Um, so that was, um, that was Tuttle. Um, and, you know, she was able to escape, thankfully. Um, and then this is looking at all of his routes, um, which, which he, when he had Walters with him. Um, so for the two weeks that he had Regina Walters, he is covering hundreds and hundreds of miles. Yes. All over the place. So um, they were picked up. Uh, Regina and um, and Ricky, Ricky. Were, were picked up down here, um, and then you can see, uh, you know, where they went all over the place. Um, you can these these phone calls right here um, are where he he called um, Regina's parents and uh, communicated with them that uh, you know he had her and that she he cut her hair. Um, okay. And then and back know, then, that's a phone booth, right? I, I mean, this booth. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yep. Um, and then this is where uh, Regina with her body was finally recovered. Um, and you can see all the different, I, I put some labels on here so you can see all the different times he was near that area. Obviously, he didn't log the barn, um, as, as the location that he stopped. Um, but you can see how often he traveled around that area um, and how many opportunities he was either uh, scoping out that barn um, and considering it as a possible location um, or, you know, driving by and making sure no one was there and it was truly abandoned um, and able to kind of get a grasp on the area um, in which he would finally murder Regina. Yeah, it's awesome. That is an interesting observation, Mike. What what came to your mind when well, you I mean, started saying you, that? Yeah, in fact, one of the things that we found with with Rhodes was that he took a lot of photographs of women in cars alongside of him as he was driving, especially because he was in a higher position. He could look down their blouse. I mean, this is how disgusting this human being was. And uh, I can't imagine that that it wasn't just 
uh, eight hours a day driving and 16 more hours a day when he wasn't just fantasizing about the next event. And so this, this barn wasn't picked just because he ran out of gas. He was dreaming about that. He was fantasizing and pretty soon he couldn't stand it anymore. And he found a victim that he could act out that, that final thing. But yeah, Natalie, let's go ahead and see where, where you took it from here. Cause this is fascinating. Um, and then the other route that we mapped out was um, Walsh. And this was, again, Candace Walsh and Douglas Ikowski, um, who, you know, started hitchhiking. Um, and then uh, Douglas's body was found in Texas. Um, and not, you know, not, it wasn't until much later, uh, later in that year of 1990, when uh, Candace's body was finally found. And I think it was by a couple of hunters that were um, off, Correct. off the road a little bit. Um, and if we, if we go in here, you know, we don't know exactly when she was killed, um, but we can kind of imagine it was sometime around January 21st, because that's when, um, you know, we, we know via the logs that, that Robert Ben Rhodes was on that route where her body was found. Interesting. Interesting. So, Natalie, one of the challenges that I gave you was that there are 104,000 missing people every year in the United States, but all we have are trucking logs that show us where Rhodes was on one particular moment in time and the next. Mm -hmm. But the difference in time became really interesting as you looked at this from a science standpoint. Why don't you share that? Right. So we have, um, there's, there's several different databases out there that, um, and you helped me understand this, that are, you know, tracking missing people um, or unidentified people who have been found and they don't know who they are. Um, and, and one of those databases is NamUs, the National um, it's Association of Missing and Unidentified Suspects. People? I don't know. But NamUs is what it is for short. Um, and and they do a great job. It's not, it's not uh, you know, all inclusive, unfortunately, but they do a great job at trying to, um, when there is an unidentified person found or when there is someone who is missing, um, trying to capture information about that person, everything from their description um, and a photo of them to where they went last, you know, they were last seen um, and when they were last seen. And so we mapped those locations out, and these are all the missing people um, between 1984 and 1990. So when we have uh, the trucking logs for for Robert Ben Rhodes, um, and then what we did is we looked at his uh, routes where he did not have um, where he didn't have a known suspect with him, right? So when he didn't have oh. Vine with him, when he didn't have Tuttle with him, when he didn't have Walters or Walsh or Douglas with him. Um, and then we wanted to look at what are the correlations there. Um, so we found these are all the routes that he took when he didn't have a known victim with him, when he could have had another victim. We matched that up using uh, space-time proximity. So looking at um, where he could he have possibly traveled from that route in the amount of time um, between the different waypoints, right? So if it takes... If it takes 24 hours to get two miles, you can go pretty far um, in that amount of time. Um, and so then we found these potentially missing people um, that, were, uh, that were within proximity of those routes. So I can bring up those routes again. So using science and, and the location, you're able to identify possible sus subjects or possible victims, missing persons that would fit profiles that Rhodes preferred. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So is there a way to look at this in a, a link analysis to try to put things together or? There is. So what you're seeing here is we have um, Robert Ben Rhodes in the center. Um, and then we have all of his known victims. So we have Ricky Lee Jones, which is actually a suspected victim because we don't have, we were not able to ever, you know, his body was never found. Um, but we do know that Regina Walters was a victim and he was convicted of killing Regina Walters. And then we have his other victims um, here as well, as well as the routes that he took. And that's what you're seeing here with the highway symbol um, that were potentially associated with these missing people um, who went missing around the same time he was traveling near them. 
That's amazing. Natalie, once you get something like this put together and you have it in place, how easy would it be to enter additional truck driving logs or the logs of cell phone data and do this same kind of analysis for law enforcement? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you would just bring in the data. Um, we have all the tools that are you know used to do this are here in a gallery of tools. Um, we used um, a, a number of these different tools to put that together this this workflow, if you will. Um, but it's really just looking at space and time, um, being able to ask questions of your data and, and find correlations in your data. And that's what this software is built to do. That's just incredible. Now, Chris, I know you're going to probably have a question and I'm going to let you ask it because then I got one final question I want to ask Natalie about. Actually, I don't have any questions. I'm, I'm just grateful. Um, you know, to see this, I mean, this is amazing stuff when you see the, you know, the, the analytics here and how it comes together, this link analysis. And, and for our viewers here, what link analysis is, is just what you're seeing in front of you. We're seeing correlated uh, behaviors or data points that connect right back to a particular target. And, you know, thank goodness Esri has this tool here. This is a, a fascinating piece. Yeah, it really is. Well, Natalie, thank you. Um, you're going to come back, right, and do some other sh uh, shows in the future? Anytime, especially if you give me data. 